Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Ed Bud here with a quick update on my training for that sub 1 hour 30 half marathon attempt. So Thursday saw seven miles at that target pace, which is coming quite common for me now of seven minutes, 30 seconds per mile. I managed to easily reach the pace on this occasion. Those kind of seven minute 30 paces are now becoming the norm for me really. I think in the past, I was going out perhaps aiming at a little lower than that, sort of 7.45, eight minutes per mile. But as the weeks have progressed, I'm finding that pace much easier to get to now, much easier to achieve and to sustain. It's amazing really how quickly the body adjusts from that kind of eight minute per mile pace up to about seven minutes 30 with relative ease just in a few weeks. Over the last week, I've pretty much exclusively used the Zoomfly 3. I'm certainly trying to get my money's worth out of this shoe. It's one that I've not been hugely convinced about, but I'm certainly keen to try and give it my best shot and try and get on with the shoe. On the Friday, we had really terrible weather. There was lots of wind, lots of rain. It was pretty terrible out there. Not particularly cold, but it's certainly a day that people probably looked outside and thought, there's no way I'm going running in this weather. So lots of rain, lots of moisture, which is ideal conditions for me. I really, really love running in the rain. This was a fartlek session. So ran about 1.5 miles of warm up, followed by four miles of fartlek between around about six minutes per mile and eight minutes per mile, and then rounded off with 1.4 miles of warm down. I managed to achieve some good pace. I think the session overall was somewhere in the region of seven minutes, 26 seconds, per mile, around about 52 minutes total. So absolutely spot on and another successful session completed. I'm finding those fartlek sessions really, really enjoyable. Uh, don't find them quite as daunting as the, perhaps even the steady or long runs. I can go out and know that I can kind of adjust that pace, make sure I'm staying within the kind of time limits that I've set for myself, but I can adjust the pace and it really is helping in terms of that recovery time after those shorter kind of sprint sessions. Having those tiny targets as you're running really helps, you know, you look for that next fence, that next telegraph pole, you know, the next dog, whatever. You're always kind of looking ahead, having those little targets and I find it really helps in terms of my kind of completionist nature. Although in fairness, I have had some slightly funny looks from members of the public as I'm kind of speeding up and slowing down. One fellow that I bumped into, well, not literally, but one fellow that I met on one of the runs actually reprimanded me about the fact I was going very fast, sort of speeding up to a higher pace and then slowing down. And he basically sort of wagged his finger at me and said, oh, you'll never get anywhere with your running like that. So, you know, I don't know, he might be a really good runner. Who knows? He might be right. The Zoomfly 3 were absolutely saturated after that session. That vapor weave up is relatively porous, but the stuff underneath was completely drenched. And it took a good couple of days for the shoe to completely dry out. What I've taken to doing is removing the laces and the insole of the shoe and then kind of hanging it up. That seems to be the best method of drying the shoe out. I've tried filling it with newspaper and things like that, but you know, I've only got so many newspapers. Plus the fact it feels like a total waste kind of just stuffing newspapers into these. There's gotta be a better way of drying them out. If anybody's got any great methods of drying out these shoes, please post in the comments below. Next day was an easy day, three miles, eight minutes per mile in the beacons. So just keeping those legs nice and supple, a little bit of recovery there. It's a particularly nice day as well. So just taking in the surroundings and enjoying the run. I had a rest day following that. I had to go and pick up my daughter. So um, I counted that one out as a rest day. Let the legs recover. It was a pretty hard week in fairness. Um, quite a lot of speed work, uh, quite a lot of miles under the belt. So nice to have a rest day. So on the Monday, I had planned around about 6.5 miles, one mile of warm up at seven minutes 30 pace, and then 5.5 miles at that half marathon target pace that I'm aiming for, which is six minutes 51 per mile. I managed to sustain an average pace there of around about six minutes 53. So I was a little bit off of the target, but I'm surprised at how close I managed to actually get it. So I think that training is working. People always say, you know, believe in the training, invest in it. Well, I certainly have. I've been giving it my best shot, really trying to meet those target paces. And I think that training is now starting to pay off. I'm starting to reap the rewards of that. Certainly those higher speeds are starting to get more achievable and reachable on a daily basis. 
I think sometimes when you're training sort of day in, day out over the course of several weeks, it's hard to see those small gains. You kind of miss them. Um, I often think of that uh, with my daughter, really. If I don't see her for a little while, you can see she's really grown in terms of how tall she is because I haven't seen her for a little bit. I think that's the same with training. Uh, you do it day in, day out, and you sometimes don't see those small gains that you've made. Training's been somewhat more sporadic this week, mainly due to childcare. I've been having to fit those training sessions in when and where I can. But I did manage to get a lovely run in, really nice temperatures the other day, around about 18 degrees of about 6.5 miles at about 7 minutes 30 pace. And with about 466 foot of elevation as well. So really, really pleased to get those kind of numbers in, certainly with that type of elevation. It's in my favourite area down in Mudford, Mudford Sock, close to Yeovil. So some really nice country roads there. Very little to bother you. You can really zone out and just kind of get into that rhythm of the running. Very little traffic on those roads as well. So as a runner on the road, kind of always got to be a little bit aware. Certainly if I'm on those kind of country roads, I dispense with the earbuds, with the headphones, and just really kind of try and zone in on my running. Paying some attention to my breathing, to that cadence, that arm movement, and to my posture. Good to get some elevation in as well. I know some of you have commented recently that I've certainly been running on some sort of flatter surfaces, trying to meet those higher paces, but managed to do that sort of steady run pace at seven minutes 30 per mile, um, up some elevation as well. So really, really pleased with that effort. So we've got a threshold effort planned for later on, around about seven miles, and four miles of that seven are to be at that kind of half marathon pace. So aiming for that 6.51 again. The sun seems to have been switched back on outside. It's really heated up in terms of the temperature, around about 25 degrees. Hopefully it will chill out a little bit later on. And I can get out and get that threshold effort done. Get some more miles in for the Zoom Fly 3. And hopefully I can get up to that 100 very soon and give you my 100 mile review. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for making it through to the end of the video. Please remember to hit subscribe and the bell for notifications. Comment below and hit the like button. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.